In the annals of audacious swindlers, one man stands out for his audacity and sheer nerve. This man is Victor Lustig, a name that echoes through the halls of history as the notorious con artist who sold the Eiffel Tower not just once but twice. Picture it. The iconic Eiffel Tower, a symbol of France's grandeur, being sold off to unsuspecting victims by a smooth-talking charlatan. Victor Lustig was no ordinary scammer. His intelligence, charm, and cunning were his most potent weapons, allowing him to weave intricate webs of deception. With these, he managed to dupe wealthy individuals and even entire governments into falling for his elaborate schemes. His story is a testament to the power of persuasion, the allure of quick riches, and the dangerous dance between ambition and morality. From ocean liners to American banks, there was no arena too grand for Lustig's scams. But before he became the man who sold the Eiffel Tower, Lustig was just a young boy from Austria-Hungary. Born in 1890, Victor Lustig was a child of humble beginnings. Born and raised in Austria-Hungary, Lustig's early life was a far cry from the glamorous world of con artistry he would later inhabit. Educated but restless, Lustig left school with a mind brimming with ambition and a knack for deceit and manipulation. It was on the opulent decks of ocean liners where Lustig cut his teeth in the world of scams. He weaved intricate webs of deception, targeting wealthy passengers with his charming persona and clever schemes. It was here that his reputation as a suave and sophisticated swindler began to take shape. However, these initial scams were just the beginning for Lustig. His insatiable desire for wealth and status propelled him into ever more daring ventures, but it was in the United States where Lustig truly began to make a name for himself. Across the Atlantic, Lustig found a new playground for his schemes. In the land of opportunity, Victor Lustig saw nothing but potential marks. His targets, banks and the well-heeled, his weapon of choice, his intellect and charisma, wielded with the precision of a surgeon's scalpel. Lustig's scams in the United States were as varied as they were ingenious, from bogus money-making machines promising riches beyond belief, to counterfeit banknotes that looked so real you could almost smell the ink. Each scam was a masterpiece of deception, with Lustig playing his role to perfection. But it wasn't just the wealthy who fell for Lustig's ruses, even the most secure institutions were not immune. Banks, historically bastions of trust and security, found themselves ensnared in Lustig's web of deceit. The audacity of his actions left many in disbelief, their losses a testament to the power of his persuasive charm. Yet these American escapades were merely a prelude, a warm-up act to the main event. For as audacious as his American scams were, they would pale in comparison to what was to come. However, it was in Paris where Lustig would pull off his most audacious scam. In 1925, Victor Lustig concocted a plan so audacious it's hard to believe it worked, not once, but twice. Picture this, Paris, the Roaring Twenties, and the Eiffel Tower, a magnificent steel structure standing tall and proud, yet believed by some to be an eyesore and a financial burden to the city. Enter Lustig, a man with a silver tongue and a mind for mischief. Lustig, ever the opportunist, seized on the murmurs of discontent surrounding the Eiffel Tower. He posed as a government official, and with an expertly forged letter of authority, was able to convince a group of scrap metal dealers that the city had decided to dismantle the tower and sell it for parts. André Poisson, a dealer eager to make a name for himself, fell for Lustig's ruse. Poisson handed over a large sum of money, believing he had secured the deal of a lifetime. It was only after Lustig had disappeared with the cash that Poisson realized he had been duped. Ashamed and fearing ridicule, Poisson chose not to report the crime, allowing Lustig to slip away undetected. But Lustig wasn't done yet. Emboldened by his successful scam, he returned to Paris and pulled off the same trick again. This time, however, his luck ran out. The second buyer was less forgiving than Poisson and reported the con to the police. Lustig, realizing the net was closing in, made a hasty retreat to Austria. The audacity of Lustig's scheme is staggering. He sold one of the world's most famous landmarks, not once, but twice, and managed to evade capture for a time. His story serves as a testament to the power of persuasion, the allure of ambition, and the dangers of unchecked greed. But like all good things, Lustig's run of luck had to come to an end. The long arm of the law eventually caught up with him, but that's a story for another time. For now, let's marvel at the audacity of the man who sold the Eiffel Tower, twice. In 1935, Lustig's charm and guile finally met its match. 
After years of deft deception and cunning cons, the law finally caught up to Victor Lustig. He had been printing counterfeit bills, an operation that was discovered by law enforcement. The man who had once sold the Eiffel Tower, not once but twice, was now facing the hard reality of his actions. Lustig was arrested and brought to trial, where his past exploits did little to soften the court's verdict. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison, a substantial term that reflected the scale of his fraudulent schemes. But prison was a far cry from the luxurious lifestyle he'd once enjoyed, and the harsh conditions took a toll on his health. In 1947, 12 years into his sentence, Victor Lustig passed away. The man who had once held the world in his conning grasp was no more. His life, filled with audacious scams and grand deceptions, ended within the grim confines of a prison cell. Victor Lustig's story is a stark reminder of the dangers of ambition and the allure of easy money. Victor Lustig's life was marked by audacity, charm, and a knack for deception. Born in Austria-Hungary in the late 19th century, Lustig left school to embark on a life of crime that would take him across oceans, into the hearts of wealthy individuals, and even to the heights of the Eiffel Tower. Twice he managed to sell this iconic French monument, preying on the greed and gullibility of his victims. But what can we learn from Lustig's scams? Firstly, a healthy dose of skepticism can go a long way. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. Secondly, the allure of easy money can cloud our judgment, leading us to make decisions we might later regret. Lustig's victims were not foolish, they were simply blinded by their own ambition and greed. His story serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of ambition without ethics and the importance of questioning everything. Remember to subscribe and like for more fascinating stories from the annals of history. Until next time, stay curious and stay skeptical.